What's going on? Brian Tong here, and this video is all about the new features on the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro that Apple didn't talk about. Because if you watch Apple's keynotes, you know, they stand in front of this screen, they list off new things coming, but they don't explain all of them. So this is where I'm gonna explain what they didn't. Now, the theme of Apple's invite was titled by innovation only, but the entire keynote to a lot of us felt like it was smaller incremental improvements. Not a bad thing, but after a year, you kind of expected more. And if you haven't checked out my reactions video to the entire Apple event, make sure you take a peek. There's good apples, there's bad apples. It is worth it. But there was actually a whole lot of innovation. There were new features that we have never seen in an iPhone, but Apple didn't really talk about them. So this is where I'm just gonna break it down. And I wanna throw this out there as well. You and I, we all benefit from the geniuses that work at Apple and tech companies everywhere. I can't do one one thousandth of what they do. Well, they could probably do one fifth, two fifths of what I do. So yeah, these are smart people that we respect. But innovation can also be interpreted pretty loosely. Some people consider a small improvement in innovation. When I see that word, I'm looking for something that's never been done before. Now the A13 is the best mobile processor in its class hands down. It has been for years. Apple's cameras improve each year, but a processor and a camera upgrade has happened every single year an iPhone has come out. So it's pretty much expected as the norm. Now the two things that really stuck out to me that Apple didn't touch on at the keynote in the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max, the all new U1 processor and Wi-Fi 6. So let's start off with the U1 processor. I talked a little bit about it in my reactions video, but I'm gonna like really get into this. And it's important because it's gonna play a huge role in one of the rumored features coming to Apple's ecosystem. Let's talk about the new Apple designed U1 chip uses ultra wideband technology. It's the first ever in a smartphone. That's innovation, and it gives the iPhone spatial awareness. AirDrop is gonna instantly benefit from this in iOS 13.1 by precisely locating other U1 equipped Apple devices. Now, Apple's website says, if you wanna share a file with someone using AirDrop, which we do all the time, just point your phone at theirs and they'll be first on the list. Have you ever tried to AirDrop in a group or on an airplane and you get three people called iPhone? Yeah, not anymore. Now the U1 chip is gonna especially play a huge role for the rumored Apple tags. That's their tile-like location tags that you can put on things like your keys, wallet bags, or trendy fanny packs. Not that I, not that I have one, <laughs> yeah. Ultra wideband is also a short range, low power radio technology that gives you precise indoor positioning that Bluetooth LE or Wi-Fi just can't. Now check this out, the distance between two UWB devices, that's gonna be short for ultra wideband. Let's say a new iPhone 11 and then one of those Apple tags, or even another iPhone 11, they can be measured precisely by calculating the time it takes for a radio wave to pass between the two devices. So UWB is up to 100 times more accurate than Bluetooth LE and Wi-Fi according to electronic design. Just by the numbers, UWB signals are able to measure the distance between two items within a five to 10 centimeter accuracy. For Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, that number is roughly a five meter accuracy. So. Apple system will be extremely precise and be able to locate an item within two to four inches of an item that has the U1 chip. But with older devices, they'll probably rely on Bluetooth LE to track them nearby. Now let's add the power of Apple's ecosystem and its huge user base to potentially help you find lost devices with that level of accuracy. It takes this tag tracking thing to a whole nother level. Now Apple didn't say a thing about it at their keynote because the Apple tags just aren't ready for prime time yet. And I absolutely prefer this approach now after all their previous hardware delays. You know, over the years, we're talking about AirPods, HomePod, the AirPower that never came out, even software updates that were delayed. It was ugly over the past few years, but this U1 chip is a huge innovation for the iPhone, for people in the ecosystem. And this is a big deal for one of Apple's future platforms. Apple just didn't say too much about it yet. All right, now next up, Wi-Fi 6. Some of you said, why didn't you talk about Wi-Fi 6? Well, you know what? I'm going to now. It first launched on a phone on the Galaxy S10. It's in wireless routers and laptops and tablets already, and it's coming to the iPhone 11. This will be a first for an Apple product. Now, it's the next generation of Wi-Fi or 802.11ax, but to make it easier for branding, it's gonna go by the name Wi-Fi 6. It's also backwards compatible with previous flavors of Wi-Fi like 802.11ac, which is now considered Wi-Fi. Now it still does what Wi-Fi does, connects you to the internet, but Wi-Fi six speeds have been tested and are roughly 30% faster if 
you have all the proper hardware in place. That's going to be key, but there's new technologies really inside of it that make it more efficient and speed up your connection. Now, to give you a better idea, the maximum speed of Wi-Fi 5 is 3.5 gigabits per second over Wi-Fi. The maximum speed of Wi-Fi 6 is 9.6 gigabits per second, and that is really a huge difference. But... In the real world, there's pretty much no way you're ever going to get those speeds. That's all theoretical, and it's really more than you'll ever need for any one single device right now. Now, according to The Verge's Jacob Kastronakis, the typical download speed in the U.S. today is just 72 megabits per second, which is less than 1% of the theoretical maximum speed for Wi-Fi 6. Uh, even if you have a gigabit connection at home, and I do for work, I'm getting roughly 500 megabits per second downloads and 40 megabits per second uploads over Wi-Fi, which is sensational, but the only time I really feel like I'm using that speed to its fullest is if I'm doing something like downloading a PS4 game over the air. Now these 500 megabits per second are just 5% of what Wi-Fi 6 can theoretically get. So that's why I'm saying like you really don't need it for that, you know, that high capacity. So guess what? You don't need to run out and get an iPhone 11 right now just because of Wi-Fi 6, but it will be a nice to have feature for the future. But the biggest advantage is because of its higher theoretical speed, that bandwidth can improve an entire network when there are a bunch of devices on it. So right now the average home has about nine Wi-Fi devices. We're talking about the average home, not all of you like crazy tech heads out there. But the guesstimate is that homes will have about 50 devices on Wi-Fi on average in the next few years with all of our phones, computers, smartwatches, TVs, game consoles, and smart home products. That's going to affect the speed of your network because current routers have a limited amount of devices that they can talk to at once. Now, there are two key technologies that are speeding up Wi-Fi 6. First one is Moomimo, Moomimo, which isn't a name for the new cow emoji. It stands for multi-user, multiple input, multiple output. It's already used in current routers and devices, but Wi-Fi 6 beefs it up. Right now, Moomimo allows routers to communicate with up to four devices at a time. Wi-Fi 6 allows routers to communicate with up to eight. If you think of this with a delivery truck analogy in mind, your delivery fleet just doubled in size. Now the other technology, Ofdma or O-F-D-M-A stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. I'm sure they had fun coming up with that one, but it allows one transmission to be sent out to multiple devices at once, so using the truck example here, one truck that goes out on a single route can then drop off stuff to multiple people on the way in that single route, making it more efficient. So Wi-Fi 6 lets routers communicate with more devices at the same time and lets routers send data to multiple devices within the same broadcast. And this will support the explosive growth of Wi-Fi gadgets coming into our homes. But don't like rush out to get all new devices with Wi-Fi 6 right now you're gonna have to make sure your router and all of your devices are equipped with Wi-Fi 6 to even take advantage of this. And over time, new devices will have Wi-Fi 6, just like the iPhone 11 does, and eventually the rest of Apple's lineup will, and other tech companies will be doing the same. They're already doing it. Most of us won't feel any of these benefits from it unless you invest in the hardware to support it, and even at that, you might feel it a little bit. Now, many people haven't even upgraded their internet speeds today, and that's really where you should look first like I said, 72 megabits per second is less than 1% of the highest theoretical limit that Wi-Fi 6 can reach. But it's going to really benefit us by making sure that we can handle all of our Wi-Fi devices that will soon be in our homes if they aren't already. So yes, I know that explanation might have been like a whole lot, but Wi-Fi 6 is in the iPhone 11 and that's why it's important maybe more in the future. All right, a nugget that Apple didn't tell you about the new iPhones also. Some of you people care about this. Some of you people don't. Check this out. Here's the breakdown of the new iPhone 11 lineup's RAM and battery capacity with the iPhone 11 now loaded with 4 gigs of RAM instead of 3 and the 11 Pros bringing 6 gigs of RAM instead of 4 to an iPhone for the first time. Now, battery life has also made a big jump. The iPhone 11 Pro we know is getting 4 more hours compared to the 10s, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max is gaining five hours compared to the 10s Max. The iPhone 11 going from the 10R is actually even gaining an hour battery as well. But this is impressive and just shows the impact of the A13 Bionic. All right, fast charging is coming to the iPhone family, but a big heads up here, only the iPhone 11 Pro and Pro Max come with the 18 watt fast charger and USB-C to lightning cable in the box. We know the 11 supports fast charging, but the 18 watt adapter and cable do not come in the box. 
You'll have to buy it separately. The charger is $29 and the cheapest USB-C to Lightning Apple cable is $19. So guess what? There's your $50 difference that was knocked off of the price point to get the iPhone 11 starting at $699. That's just trash. Now, USB-C chargers and cables come standard with pretty much every other phone in the world that supports it. Every single one. So I guess the word pro not only means a better camera for the iPhone, but also means we include a fast charger and cable now. All right. Did I miss anything in here that Apple didn't talk about? Because if there's a feature that was really important or something that I completely missed, you know what to do. Let me know in the comments. Let us all know in the comments right down here because I read them. And if you like this video, you know the drill. Thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you also want to get even more Apple, check out my weekly audio podcast, The Apple Bits XL, where we just dive deep into the top stories that matter. Also, all my work is independent, and you can support it at patreon.com slash Tong. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Peace.